Welcome to episode 13 of Ships Tips. Now on this episode, I've brought you to a beautiful fishery called Acorn Fishery near Bristol, near where I live. I come here, I do come here in sort of stages. Sometimes I come here all the time. Sometimes, you know, I have big gaps, but I've brought you here today to just do a simple hard pellet feature. And I'm going to run you through everything I do, because we all know now it's warming up a little bit. You know, we're out of sort of springtime, hopefully going into summer. It's a nice warm day today. One of the first warm days we've had for absolutely ages and hard pellets now play a massive part in my fishing. So the first thing I'm gonna do is run you through all the baits that I've brought for today's session. Right, let's go through the pellets that I've brought for today. I've brought the sizes, which are really, really important. No matter whether you're fishing soft pellets, hard pellets, you always bring a several selection of size. Now I'm targeting carp today. In this lake called Paddock, there's a lot of carp. There's not many F1s and there's a few Carasio, but where I've sat today, it's mostly carp. So I've brought a selection of Fin Perfect pellets. I've brought some four mils, some dry ones. Now, one thing that I do, um, what you'll find sometimes as well, you know, here at Acorn Fishery, you can use whatever pellets you like. So, you know, you don't have to use fishery pellets, but some fishery fisheries you go to, you have to use their pellets. And sometimes they're not always the greatest. And you have a problem with soaking the pellets. Sometimes you soak the pellets, they fall apart, which is, you don't want that, especially when you're fishing for carp in the warmer months. So you can use these, I, mean, I love that stuff. It's called Code Red Oil. It's basically a fish-based oil and you can pull it on your pellets. It don't matter whether it's two mil, four mil, six mil, or eight mils. You know, I don't have to do that today because I'm using Fin Perfect pellets, but I'll just do it anyway, just to show you. You can put a little bit on like that. You don't need a lot. Just spin your pellets around. Do these. You can do them the night before. You can do them on the morning. Just give them 20 minutes, half an hour to take that all in. And the most important thing is that, obviously it gives it a nice smell and a lot of oil, but it also makes the pellets sink really, really quickly. And that's what you're gonna need when you're trying to catch carp on the bottom, fishing with hard pellets. So like I said, you can leave them there. It's as simple as that. But most importantly for me is when I go to a fishery, it doesn't allow um, any pellet and you've got to buy their pellets. That's the time to start buying these oils. So that I'll use that. There's obviously other oils you can have the um, clear oils, which basically you just put on. You can obviously buy oils with different smells. So it's all out there ready for you to buy. But I've bought some six mils as well. This is gonna be probably my hook bait for today. I'll probably feed a few, but I'll see how the fishing goes. I'll probably introduce some four mils, see how the fishing is. Sometimes, I know at the moment where I've been fishing, you've got to feed four mils to actually get the fish in your peg. And then you can introduce, as the fishing gets better, maybe later on in the session, you can just start feeding six mils only. So that's my six mils. I've got some eight mils. On this fishery, personally, I think it's gonna be fours and sixes, but always bring a few eight mils. So, you know, even if you don't feed them, you can put them on the hook. Sometimes can make a big, big difference. So I've got some eight mils. And one of the nice things that I use, I have to excuse the fire engine in the background, I use some uh, Robin Red, well you can see from there, they're bright red. They are a fantastic hook bait. Honestly, the amount of fish I catch, I've been to venues, I'm getting the odd bite on a hard pellet and I just put a red pellet on the hook and you get twice as many bites. I would say, you know, whether you're straight lead fishing, waggler fishing, always take some Robin Reds with you. You know, even if you want to feed a few, it doesn't matter. So that's the bait for today. I'll now run you through the three rigs that I've got up, ready to go. I'm going to run you through a couple of the rigs and then I'll talk about the other ones if and when we use them. 
So my all-round rig really, which is this float, it's an F1 maggot, they're absolutely fantastic. But let's start with the elastic anyway. I've got four, uh, sorry, 13 drawer slip in there, which is a great all-round elastic. It's a, it's a new elastic, it's been out for a while. It's absolutely superb for catching any, you know, fish from a pound up to sort of eight or nine pound. Uh, I've got a little cab pot on there, which is gonna be really, really important. And we've got a little sprinkle cap on there, so I can put me four mils and six mils in there. 017 reflow power. And I've got a little 4B12 F1 maggot. And on a venue like today, with it being like nice and calm, sometimes having a little float on there, especially with the depth of water, I'm only fishing in about probably just under three foot of water, which is a little bit off, little bit off the far bank, but we'll talk a bit more about that as we go. They can be really, really important. Obviously got me marked there where I've plumbed up. And I've just got, I mean, some people use stock, some people use stock. That's entirely up to you. I've got a little shot on this rig and all I've got them spaced out so they're probably just under half depth down to the hook. They're just spaced out so I can actually flick this out and sort of catch on the drop. I mean, hard pellet fishing sometimes, you can catch on the drop. And with a day like today, that might be the case. I don't know yet. Um, and then I've just got down to an 013, um, 15 centimetre, six inch at length of 013. And I've got a 16 GPM on there and the little band. Now, one thing I've done for a long time you can hair rig, there's not a problem with that, but I love just hooking the band. It's something I've done for years and years. I think it's really, really good for carp fishing, especially with bigger pellets. Um, so basically what you do, you just put the hook through the inside of the band, back out, so the band is actually on the hook, and then you just feed the band over top the pellet. I've already got the six mil pellet on there. So, and, that, and we'll talk a bit more about that as we sort of go through the day. So that's the rig for fishing just off the far bank. And then what I've actually done then, I've set up a different float, the exactly the same elastic, exactly the same little pot, 017 main line, and I've got a 4B10 carp shallow. They're absolutely superb. You know, they, they're called carp shallows, but you can use them for everything. I use these floats for fishing over towards islands, like far bank features, and even down the edge, or even fishing for carp shallow. I said 017 again, I've got a simple bolt. Now this is this rig is for fishing tight over. I've actually found a couple of areas. You know, one of the areas is right tight to the far bank. I've probably got just about 20 inches, I reckon that is, which I think is going to be a great depth for today. Um, and then exactly the same length, 013 down to a 16 GPM. 013 bottoms, I think today is going to be enough because I do like to fish on the lighter side to try and catch the, the real crafty fish. We're not in full summer mode yet. You know, we've, this is like, I'm sat here in a jumper, but this is the first warm day. That water is still quite cold. So that's the two floats that I use for a lot of my hard pellet fishing. I'm not gonna run you through the other one because I'm itching to get fishing. So I'm gonna turn around now and then start the day off. I'm ready to go now. One thing for certain with hard pellets is you don't wanna feed a lot. That is one thing that I find over the years, especially on menus like this, you've got to go really careful, you know, how much you feed. So I'm actually going to start at 11 metres, which is just going up that stony shelf. So I'm off the silt, which is a real, you know, that's something you've got to think about, especially on a venue like this. If you can fish on like a stony bottom with the weather getting a bit warmer, that's going to be really important. So at 11 metres, I'm literally going to feed around about 20 pellets. There's probably 20, 25 pellets there. Only the four mils, with that little bit of oil on them. And that's where I'm gonna start. But I'm also gonna feed my other line, or one of my other lines in shallow water. So this is where I'm gonna start. I'm just gonna tap out a few four mils, like that, just a little area. Stick the two sections on, which I've got here and feed me 14 meter line. I've actually got, I've plumbed up several areas to try and fish the same float or the same rigs in different areas, but we'll talk about them as we go. Now I'm going to feed one of my shallow lines, that line across there to the left, where the bank sort of caved in, like plumbed up, absolutely beautiful. It's like a dinner plate. And I'm going to tap in about the same amount of four mils. So I'm not putting no two mils in, but I am trying to target a bigger carp or just carp. 
so 14 and a half meters just tap them out again it's just to put a little bit of smell in the water and we might have to go over there quite quick with the sun being nice and warm today they might just want to be in shallow water so 11 meters i've plumbed up down the edge top kit plus two and i can just throw a few four mils down there whilst we're fishing so I'm going to start out there, like I said, 4B12 F1 maggot, 6mm pellet which I've already got on. I'm not going to put anything in my cad pot a minute. And hopefully we can get some quite quick indications. You've got to be patient sometimes because like, you are fishing for carp and sometimes it, you know you get an indication straight away. There's a carp just top, so that's a good sign. So that where I'm fishing there is just going up that stony shelf. Got a couple of little adjustments shot on that float, like I always do, so I might have to take one of them off in a minute. Take one of the little adjustments shot off. I want a bit more float, a little bit more float showing in that. That's better. You just see the weight of the pellet then, just go on the bottom, your float just just comes up a little bit. You can see that little bit of oil as well pinging off the pellets, which is nice. Ooh, a little liner then. One, one little tip as well with hard pellets, especially if you're fishing on a silty bottom, it's always worth putting a little bit more line on the bottom. It works really well with hard pellets on silty bottoms. Because we plumb, I've just plumbed up as normal there, so the body's just out of the water. But if you're fishing on a soft bottom, definitely, you know, anywhere up to sort of a float length over depth can be even better, especially if you're, if you're getting liners or indications, you're struggling to get the fish. Just try putting a little bit more line on than normal, especially now going into the warmer months. Oh, a little indication then. But there's one thing you've got to bear in mind as well, especially on a venue like this. Sometimes you've got to go down to put actually putting a four mil on the hook. It can make a huge difference sometimes. They can be really funny, carp, what they want to pick up. Try and get away with six mils. There we go. That didn't take long, so that's brilliant. So that's just the most important thing I think is getting on that hard bottom. That's what I'm looking for. When I plumb, when I was plumbing up, I actually come back about two foot from where I'm fishing, and when I drop my plummet on the bottom, you actually see the bubbles like come up because obviously the silt's soft. And I said to Jake, who's out with me today, I'm like, you know, that is what I sort of try and look for, especially in those of the warmer months. Feels like a nice carp. There's some big tension here. 
up to sort of four or five pound. They're absolutely beautiful fish. So just throw a few four mils down there. Not many, probably like half a dozen. Nice little common carp, probably two and a half, three pound. And I've actually fished a few matches here recently and they fight so hard. Look at that, lovely. Lovely acorn carp. Woo, 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 woo. Gonna need me disgorger on that. So you can see that, it's just up perfect in the corner. Brilliant start. Let's get him back. And now that band, that pellet now, I would change that. I always do. I can't tell you why, but I hate going back. Unless it's absolutely solid, I find it very difficult not to put a fresh pellet on. So I always put a fresh pellet on. The band's still perfect, ready to go. And just make sure you just push it up the shank of the hook. So it's a straight bit of the hook, just that little bit like that. And then this time, I'm just going to put 15 four mils in. It's quite negative, but you'll find that with hard pellet fishing nowadays, especially on these sort of lakes. And I'll just dip that in the water before I ship out. That stops the pellets from actually, if you're not great at shipping your pole out, it stops them from actually coming out of the pot. And I'm just going to sprinkle them about a little bit, not all down the same hole, and a bit of a line, and drop your drop your pellet in. And just lift that so it's off the end of your pole. That's perfect, look at that. You know, that's my favorite float, the F1 maggot float I use for a lot of my fishing. There's, love, there's all sorts of different floats you can use, maybe a thicker top. But for me, you know, it's just an all round float. If I wanted to put a piece of worm on the hook or a piece of sweet corn, it's just nice and negative, you know, it's a nice float. I can fish for silvers with that, skimmers, you know, F1s, which are really crafty at Carasio. And uh, it's just my all round float, but there's lots of floats that you can use. Just lift and drop a little bit. And I've got two size bands as well. I've got the smaller band down from the, this is a medium band I've got on here, but I can put a small band on. And if I wanted to, I could actually put a, you know, the smaller band to put a four mil pellet on. And we will try that later on. But there is a lot of little pot, you know, on these sort of venues, little canal style venues like this, you have got to use a little pot quite a bit. You know, catapulting is fine, but what you don't want to do is try and get your pellets to spray all up to the far bank, especially when it's warmer, because they, them carp can go into them far bank, you know, where the grasses and that are, and they can be an absolute nightmare. So go really careful with that. You can probably just see, like, about two foot back from that, there's an odd little bubble coming up. And it wouldn't surprise me if, you know, a couple of those pellets have just fell down that shelf a little bit. And there might be an odd skimmer or something down on that silt. But if you fish on that silt, a lot of days they're really difficult to catch. That's a liner. 100% a liner, that. And I've also actually plumbed up to my left a bit. I found the same depth as what I've got there, and it's actually a section on. Here you are, see that little tiny bite then, just as that settled. That's what them little rigs are so good at. A lot of people have said, I wouldn't have struck it that, Des. I don't know whether, I don't know whether Jake actually got that. Hopefully he has. That's just where, you know, you've actually seen the bite where it's actually sucked the bait in. And that's what our, you know, our pellet fishing on these sort of venues are all about. The more you're playing that, just a few pellets down the edge. And a lot of our pellet fishing, you know, when you're fishing short down the edges, it is about just chucking the odd bit of bait in. It's quite simple fishing, really. It's 
slightly bigger fish. I'm just going to put a little bit of float Vaseline on that as well when I get that out, just to poke that little, just to poke the bristle up a little bit more. Slightly bigger one, probably four to five pound that one. Another call in the common. That's a great start, you know, first 10 minutes. A couple of early carp, that's what we need to get us going. Woo, they are proper angry here. I'm not gonna hold him up much. Probably four pound, let's get him back. The hook's actually come out in the net. Band still on. And obviously I'm thinking about now that other line as well. So I've got to remember to put a little bit of bait in there. There we are, the band's still as I put it on. I'm just going to put a little bit of orange float Vaseline on there. Brilliant little things. Get a couple of them, they do them yellow and orange. They last you a lifetime. But brilliant when you're fishing like I am with little floats. And that'll just hold the bristle up a little bit. So I'm going to get another six mil at the moment. Just a six mil fin at the moment. If you can't, if you can't use, um, if you can't get the band over, just use a bandum, little bandum tool. Lucky I got girl's nails, so I ain't got a problem. Again, just nice and simple. 15, 15 or so, I'm not going to count them out. Dip that pot in the water. Before I ship out, a couple of pellets down the edge. You know, if I was fishing longer down the edge, I'd have to stop and put a little pot of pellets in and just spread them out again. And just dropping that upwind, the wind's blowing right to left. And what happens is, if you drop that to the right, you actually see that it actually sort of helps you because it's actually the float is forcing into the wind so if you try and if you want to fish on the drop if you watch that now with that bit of breeze you can let that go and because the wind's trying to blow the float to the left it helps you catch try and get a bite on the drop If I was probably fishing in open water on a, a lake, oh God almighty, that was my best bite and I missed it. I would probably be actually catapulting a few as well, but it's so difficult on a snake lake because like I said, you don't want that bait. Unless I can't catch, I need to do something to start catching. Then I would fire a bait into the far bank and try and get some fish, you know, maybe even sucking off the bank and things like that. But this time, you know, starting the session, I don't want to do that. I don't want to upset what I'm trying to do. So just tapping a few pellets in, you know, doing what I'm doing. I've had a couple of early carp, so I don't really want to go and sort of mess around too much at the moment. And don't be scared to lift and drop. I'm not getting many, you know, if you was getting loads of indications, you'd probably be lifting and dropping all the time. But that's sitting there absolutely lovely, that. To me, that is like the perfect presentation. Probably like four or five mil of the bristle showing. Any little indication, you know, you're going to see it.
little indication there. And that's the nice thing about having your float dotted down as well. You see those little indications, you see a little liner, you know, and then you can like lift and drop. So there might be one down there and if you lift and drop, it might snatch at your bait. That's the sort of things that I'm looking for all the time. It's pe probably people don't realize that I'm looking for that as well. If I get a little indication, that might say, what, if I lift and drop now, I might better get that fish. Where if you have your float stuck right out of the water, sometimes you don't see those little indications. It don't give you any signs. I'm trying to hold the float because we've got a bit of a side wind. It's not very, it's not very strong, admittedly. I'm just trying to, you know, see the line, which is probably in the water, sort of four or five inches from me float. But I'm trying to, I'm trying to hold the pole, sort of over top the float as much as possible. Because when I do get a bite, I'm on it immediately. I don't have me pole like that really. I want it up. You can see the line there. I don't touch the float, or I try not to move the float. If it was dead calm, I'd have that, yeah, like that, look. Perfect. That's a decent fish as well, that. So it's all them little things that make the difference. Of course you foul look a few. I mean, I'm not, I'm not gonna lie. I have had days, and recently I've had a few, you know, indicate times I've actually fouled up a lot of fish, and, that comes with the territory this time of year. They're a bit funny at the moment. We've had a real bad May, you know, loads of rain, the water's cold. You get a bit of sun, they're off the bottom. If you can find a little area like I have, get off that silt. You might not get millions of bites, but the bites you get are the fish you want to catch. A little ghosty that you'd have to excuse the car horn i think there's a mot station or something going on behind us lovely he's not very happy that one nice little ghosty these are your bread and butter fish really for this sort of fishing i'm not even going to hold him up because he's, he's i can tell he's He's ready to beat me up, that fish. Lovely ghosty, probably five pound, that. So what a brilliant, you know, brilliant first 20 minutes. There we go. Well, a little bit of an update. I had a nice little start feeding four mils with that six mil. I had a couple on robin reds and then I changed over. It went really difficult to be honest. I changed over to actually putting a four mil on. So that's actually on a four mil repeller. It looks, you know, when you actually look at it, it looks terrible really, because you've got a, you know, a 16 hook yeah, that's what that one's actually blown blown the pellet up the line that's a skimmer obviously i've had a few silvers but when i actually when it went hard i went to a four mil and it was absolutely brilliant i caught some more carp but i'm just going to stop fishing a minute and just go and feed that that over line in the shallower water because i think it ain't going to be long before i've fed it a couple of times since we started Put a little bit of water in there. Even on the big pot, if you just put a little bit of water in there, a sprinkle, it just stops the pellets from all coming out as your pole pot jumps up and down a little bit. So I had a good plum round this morning when we started, or before we started, to try and find some nice little areas. 
So I'm just going to sprinkle some pellets in there. I'm only going to give that another sort of 10 or 15 minutes. I'll never, never go on that 11 metre long. That 11 metre long has been really good, to be honest. Not been hectic, just been steady fishing. And I don't just sit there for like hours and hours waiting for a bite. I've actually come back, you know, tapping another sort of 24 mils. So I'm just picking out the sort of bigger four mils from the pot. Ones with a bit of oil on them. Little band, little small, it's a small band this, not a medium band, because I've gone down to a four mil. Some venues, such as Acorn, the difference is crazy. You know, if the fishing would have been hectic and there would have been a lot of fish about today, I mean, it's been good, but if it had been really good, I can cancel out the four mils and just put six mils in, but it's never felt like I've had problems with foul looking. I've not had like loads of fish in me peg to get them sort of problems. It's just about being nice and patient, feeding a little bit of bait, still priming up that inside line with a few fours. And that's what I'm looking for with hard pellet fishing. If it would have been one of them days when they're really having a go, I can then put like six mils in, but the, you know, that might happen as the session goes on. But at the moment, I think it's, you know, it's hot. It's the hot, one of the hottest days of the year. They're a bit funny. Even though we're still catching plenty, it's not, I'm not getting like liners and crazy stupid bites. It's just nice to sit there. But the fish we've caught recently, definitely four mils have been better. It's a, you know, there's, there's no indications. It's just wallop. I'm having that. We're on a six mil. I was getting an odd little silly little indication. So it was just a fact, you know, just easy to put a small band on, a four mil pellet, tried it, caught straight away, caught some nice carp. But as we've gone, you know, we've been fishing for a couple of hours now. I've not actually seen any signs over by the far bank, but it doesn't mean that they're not there. Even in 18 inches of water, they don't always show themselves. So I'm going to give, I'm going to give this another five, 10 minutes and then I'll report back when we start fishing over to the far bank. <laughs> That's what you call a bite. Well, there's another one over to the far bank. That's it, 14 and a half metres. I've had a few tapping in a few pellets, but it was like, I don't know really, it just, it was like R and it just felt I needed to do so much. So I picked the catapult up and started, and it's quite nice here because I've got that bit of bare bank where in front of me I've got those reeds and you'd have to find it, you know, you have to go really careful if you've done it against reeds. But with that nice bit of bare bank, I've started catapulting some four mils over and I've moved me shot about, because I've had a few over. They're really crafty, oh, really crafty. They're beautiful fish. Look at them. That's back on a six mil. I've not put a four mil on yet over there. And what I've done, I've actually moved a couple of shot up. So that's a 4B10 float. I've moved a couple of shot up below, below the float. And I've just got two number 10 stots or shot, whichever you prefer, down the line. And I'm just putting a 6 mil, trying to pick out one of the 6 mil smaller pellets. Because they are really crafty. But I'm still catching them. And I'll just run you through what I've been doing. So I'm tapping a few pellets in whilst I go over. But I've got to keep lifting and dropping, like literally making a little bit of noise with the pellet. 
You've got a load of the fishery goats on the opposite side at the moment, eating the eating the far bank away. So I'm tapping them out from a height to make a bit of noise. And then try and drop that six mil. So it makes a little bit of noise. There is a little bit of grass or something up there. That's the only trouble with that bit. And it's like they're there and they won't go down on the bottom. I caught a few when I first went out, like just being patient. And then it was like, missed a few indications. Just felt like, I don't think you would catch shallow. There's just not enough there. And that's what I'm doing. I'm like plonking the pellet in. like that and just watching it go down with the float picking my catapult up just want to make sure the pellet goes down because there is a little bit of stuff hanging over the water i think just leave it for a few seconds Lift it back out. Make sure that pellet makes that little plop. And then the catapult a few. Like that. Lift it out, drop it in. just not settled. I think with this warm weather, the first day of this warm weather, it's making them go a little bit scattered. You're probably thinking about spawning and stuff. Look at that there. Look. There was one there now. I should have left that. I just spooked that one by lifting my rig out. They're proper cagey. This is where you've got to work, you know, you've got to work hard. Dropping your rig in. It's just caught on some of there. That's the only. It just catches now and again. Probably on a bit of grass is hanging over. Let's come back a bit. There we go. I mean, to be honest, I'm not sure whether that moved or not then, but I picked up. It's only a little stocky, but it just shows you how crafty they are. And I, don't, I don't think really they want to settle in shallow water yet. Another day I could have like come here, trapped a few pellets across. And like literally just caught one a chuck and it's just not been like that. Both lines are good. But that line, it just seems like if you tap a few pellets in, it's not enough. You need to make a bit of noise. So I'm just going to go straight back over a minute. Just catapult a few in. It's like I've found it in a few different venues at the moment. It's like they want to... It's like they won't come shallow and they won't feed on the bottom properly. And that's when you've got to be a bit like, you know, do what I'm doing here, especially on this shallow line. It's work a lot harder. So I'm just going to catapult a few now. And then just watch that. Look at that. That's, that's exactly what I mean. You don't get better than that for the camera, to be honest. It's rare that it was, I just feel that they won't come up. They won't, there's not enough of them to come up shallow. And I found that wherever I've been fishing at the moment. I've tried fishing shallow here in the last couple of matches. It just ain't happened. With a few more days of this, mind, and it might change.
But I love that fishing, especially when you've got that bit of bare bank as well. There's most of the pegs on this venue, you've got a bit of bare bank and you really do need that. When you're fishing in these grasses, it can be really tough sometimes. That's when you're forced to fish shallow because you've got too much water on the edge of them. So you've got to fish either that or you do what I'm doing, which is loose feeding and fishing through the water. And it is, a, you know, it's harder work, but the rewards on the day can be massive. And this could, this could be the middle of the match as well. We know when things go tough, this is like midday for us now, when the fish are probably not that bothered. They all like peas in a pod, eh? like two and a half pain. Cool. Look where that one's looked. That's typical, that, of hard pellet fishing. Just on the side of the mouth. Nice fish, though. And I think what we'll do, we'll try and get one more and we're going to call it a day because it's been absolutely brilliant. I'm going to leave the edge, I think, because I'm really enjoying that. I've enjoyed it. It's been absolutely superb, to be honest. When it's like this, when it's a bit tougher, but you're still catching carp, it's great. I mean, just looking at it like that, I've, I've, I've only actually used one band. It's still doing the same even on that far line. Just tap a few in again. And I'm sure if we stayed on a little bit longer, it would get better and better and better over there. And I'm sure we would catch some right big fish. So just make a bit of noise. You know, if it was fishing proper, if it was fishing like, you know, differently, I'd be tapping those pellets in and probably make as less noise as possible if I could keep them in the peg by doing that. And that ain't been happening over there. I caught a few doing it, but as soon as I started catapulting, you just got, it just felt better. Look at that then, look. You can't believe how fast they reject your bait on a day like today. Another day, it'd be completely different. Nicer. When I plumbed up there, I found, said I found a nice little, little area which was quite flat. No snags, a few stones on the bottom, but not not many. And I plumbed all the way along there until I found. Luckily, I found that little area. Oh, that was a little, probably a little stocky. I reckon that. There's an odd roach in that. We've had a couple of roach and a skimmer over there as well. There we go. Just sort of inch that right up against that bit of bare bank then. That's what's so nice about that 13 Dura is you can catch fish from like a pound to you know anything you're going to catch in this venue really or a lot of venues but was a bit bigger than that actually it's probably one of those, one of those two two and a half pound fish again but just tapping a few in loose feeding a few working the bait you know not all the time sometimes if you don't get a bite for a while sit there and see if you can just be patient on the bottom there's definitely been a few times where i've had a loose feed Try and flick that pellet in, try and create a little bit of noise. But I'm going to call this the last fish because it's been absolutely brilliant. And it looks, believe it or not, looks like it's actually going to rain again, which is unbelievable.
probably been the wettest May on record. A bit smaller than the other ones I've been catching over there, but really nice. Look at that. Absolutely pristine acorn fishery carp. These are the real crafty fish. Them sort of two pounders can be really difficult some days. So like I said, all I've done on me rig there, just two number 10 stots down. I would say that's 18 inches deep and you don't see a sign. You just get a bite out of the blue, whether that was on the drop or on the bottom. But there you go. Sort of summary really was that 11 meter line, just tapping a few pellets in. And even, even today, if, I would, if I'd have gone on the 11 meter line, it had been really, really tough. Obviously you can change baits and that, but this whole episode has been about hard pellet fishing. I would have even have catapulted some pellets over top that line. I didn't have to today. It was better, I think, just to tap in like 15 four mils, sit there with a six mil on it to start, but then, I would use the same hook, same line, just put a small band on and tried a four mil. And that was really good. I caught quite a lot of them sort of two to three pound fish. And it, that's been, it's been weird. Whether it's just a part of the lake today, I've not caught any big fish. I've caught some skimmers. Um, obviously kept priming up my long line over to that far bank. It's really hard because sometimes you're waiting for some, you know, you're waiting for some boils or you're waiting for some mud to come up. That ain't happened today. And I think that's probably how the you know it's a bit moody at the moment everywhere's a bit moody they're not willing to settle over any bait and i've actually fished this venue a few times recently and they won't settle it's like you've got to leave a line go back on it and to keep catching the fish but anyway i've gone over there we've probably fished over there for a good hour and a half and the fishing's been really good to be honest first off sitting there tapping pellets in like i was at 11 meters and then nothing it just sort of slowed down really and i said to jake i said i'm going to start catapulting there now just to try and make something happen and that has really helped it's been a lot harder to fish because you've got to keep lifting your rig out dropping your rig in and i'm sure if we stay a little bit longer either you might even have to come up shallow or you'd have just been tapping pellets in again and then catch on the bottom properly but like i said them two two and a half pounders are really good fun to catch but they can be really difficult so there you go. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you've some great tips. It's really, really easy hard pellet fishing. You know, there's not a lot going on in your side tray, which is really nice. But as you can see what I've done over there, sometimes you have to work at your, you know, you've got to work at your fishing a lot more. So there you go. I hope you picked up some great tips. Thanks to everybody at Acorn Fishery. It's been an absolute pleasure fishing here today. And I'll see you next time on the next issue of Ships Tips. <laughs>